Yeah, I, I had a little bit of experience doing this during the pandemic, which was a fascinating time when all the gyms were struggling to deal with reopening in the midst of COVID. And we were looking at how to re reduce infection with COVID and there were lots of restrictions. And my local gym turned to me and said, well, how do we manage this? So uh, again, and there's a lot of, I think all infections, whether that's viral, bacterial or fungal, they all respond to relatively similar measures and practical steps. And I think the the kind of main thing is having some robust system in place for uh, disinfecting the, the the equipment that 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 your gym members are going to be using. And I just want to make one thing clear before we dive into this: is the difference between um, sanitizing, disinfecting, and sterilizing. Sanitizing is really just giving something once over with a J cloth, uh, you know, and that's probably what some gyms would do. And some gym members would turn up with a little towel and they'll just give it a little once over. That really doesn't do very much. Uh, you might wipe the sweat off, but if there's any residual fungal spores or virus particles, it's not going to do anything for that. Uh, then there's sterilization, which is completely, almost way too far which is uh, you know, a surgical level where you're just killing everything in sight. And that's totally unnecessary and unachievable. Um, decontamination is, is really what we're, we're looking at, which is where we're, um, we're killing nearly 100% of everything, but not completely nuking the place. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that's really what you're aiming for. And there's lots of different cleaning products that will achieve that. I'm not here to promote any particular product, but something that contains either alcohol or formaldehyde, chlorine, bleach, um, some kind of robust disinfectant. And I think for as a gym owner, you need to strike the balance between something that actually works and also not trashing your kit. Cause some of this, particularly the bleach based products will absolutely wreck your mats. Yeah. Um, and, and don't underestimate the, the benefits of just physically wiping something down and, and having, it's more important to have a robust daily regime. It's more about the systems and processes in place that to make sure that happens consistently across all your equipment in your facility than fussing over precisely what product you use. And that's one of the biggest barriers is actually making sure it happens on that day-to-day -day basis. In between training sessions, everything is thoroughly wiped down. Um, uh, and I think that's more important. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I mean, primarily the mats are, yes. are the issue in, in grappling sports and jujitsu. So where we train, I don't know what's in the, the product you might know, I don't know, but yeah, they, they, they've got this big canister thing and they, they, they'll, they'll sweep get all the hairs off and yeah. then they'll literally walk pace up and down the mat spraying this stuff and then someone else will then get down there with a mop yeah yep. um and um then that mop sort of the, the, that gets changed and everything else the the issue you've got when you do that i think is that you the mat then stays wet for mm -hmm. for a, a fairly yeah. decent period of time minutes, half hour, yeah. Yeah. yeah so when you're running a busy academy in the evening and you've got maybe i don't know a few classes back to back mm -hmm. You know that you probably don't have the ability to leave sort of even 15 minutes but certainly 20 minutes 30 minutes between classes to maximize obviously the the evening time and and then also you've got you know uh, a session that's going on for maybe an hour and a half and people are just sort of circulating in, on and off the mats like how yeah. do you manage that <laughs> absolutely and this is the biggest barrier to it being i mean there's a, one thing is having like a, a a desire to do this and then the other thing is actually implementing it in a way that's actually effective and the practicality of running a busy gym where you've got back-to-back -back classes and very little change around time you've just I, th I think you have to design a system and, and get the right tools in place I mean for example the CrossFit box I work at the they issued out these um just wet wipes basically and we were we we, we trained with barbells and big plates and and you know, you've got one paltry little wet wipe and you're expected to clean down your sweaty plate with this little wet wipe <laughs> and then at the end of the day there's this massive like pile of just wet wipes and it's just so it just doesn't work and then we try we we so we started doing that to wipe everything down and then we moved to using just paper towels and bottles uh, spray bottles of, of sanitizer and that was actually much more environmentally friendly and you can actually get a good volume of cleaning product on, over the surface that you're cleaning and, and actually the thing i learned from the, the gym i work with is it, it, a lot of it's about trial and error it's about just trying something uh, seeing if it works and if not just change tack and the, what works in one gym won't work for another. And I think you've just got to get a robust system in place that enables you 
within the restrictions of work of, of running a busy environment uh, making sure that that consistently happens every day and ideally between each each session from from the um what would you say about obviously back-to-back classes some people do multiple classes so say they're doing a bit of kickboxing they'll do an hour of kickboxing and then they'll jump straight over to the jiu-jitsu mats and then someone will be then say like i oh, come on i'm fresh they're all sweaty would you recommend them showering in between the session quickly, changing clothes and then coming back on to limit the risk? Or while they're still sweaty, does it really matter? And then yeah. I'm going to be sweating five minutes. That's, that's, I, I, Again, I, it's, it's, it's striking the balance between what's optimal. Yeah, ideally put everyone, you sterilize everyone in between <laughs> every session. You know, you'd like, give everyone an album yeah, lockdown yeah. with a load of <laughs> chlorhexidine. You have this big trough and you dip everyone in. <laughs> Cheap <laughs> stick like, between the mats. But yeah, your gym <laughs> membership's yeah. going to just kind yeah. of free fall, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. If, if you start doing that so it's what's feasible and what's optimal it's yeah. striking the balance between th- those two things yeah, yeah it's, it's such a hard one isn't it? i don't think there's any there's no real right or wrong answer no. so it's exactly. just do your best i imagine i think to some extent it is just the nature of the beast isn't it it's it's that sort yeah. of sport it's that sort of environment where you're going to get infection yeah. and i'd like to add sorry quickly i'd like to add our gym is super clean yeah. like our gym is genuinely super clean and we still have the issues i'd hate to think some of those gyms around the country that are not yeah. like what we're like mm. And then, do you know what I mean? Like, it must be, it must be a fucking, yeah. must be a nice oh, wild yeah. west out there. There's a lot of places that aren't switched onto this at all.